I've been on a sci-fi and cyberpunk anime kick lately, and uh, I figured, hey, I make AI-related videos, so why don't I talk about some of the cool stuff I've been watching. This video goes over a few classic 80s and 90s sci-fi anime, and examines them through a modern lens, and asks the question, does it depict artificial intelligence in some way? I don't want to make a bloated intro, so let's go ahead and get started with the list. Megazone 23 is a 1985 movie about 80s Japan? Well, that's how it starts off at least. But when the main character Shogo obtains a futuristic motorcycle, we start to learn that there's more to this world than what we see on the surface. After his friend is killed by mysterious men for possessing this motorcycle, Shogo decides that his safest option is to go to the media and turn over the motorcycle to a news organization in the hopes that this public display will keep him from getting assassinated. However, as soon as he contacts Japan's biggest pop idol, Eve, on live television, his transmission was suddenly cut off, and viewers were led to believe that he hung up out of nervousness. But, while Eve continues her live broadcast as normal, Shogo also continues to talk to Eve at the same time, and little does he know that he's just being kept busy while these mysterious men find him. You see, it turns out that Eve is not real. People have never actually seen Eve in person and have only seen her on television. Her voice, her appearance, and her music are all completely fabricated, but not just simply made up by humans. Her music videos are generated autonomously with minimal human input, and even the engineers that are aware of this secret are astonished at how much it does by itself. Well, that seems familiar. Where have I seen that before? It turns out Eve is actually part of a larger supercomputer. And when the people controlling her start to take over her higher level functions, she starts to reach out for help, even making a last ditch effort on live television before abruptly being silenced. But that's not all. It turns out this supercomputer was keeping humanity in the dark this whole time. They weren't really living in 20th century Tokyo. They were actually inside of a massive spaceship this whole time. It turns out the Earth was destroyed and the computer figured that 1980s Tokyo was the peak of humanity and so it chose to simulate that in order to keep everybody happy. Wait a minute! The Matrix was redesigned to this. The peak of your civilization. Anyway, this is a pretty interesting sci-fi movie, and while AI isn't specifically mentioned, the concept of a supercomputer that makes its own decisions is clearly AGI. And I thought the depiction of a television studio basically having computer-generated hit music, along with a totally fabricated human, was especially interesting considering we're on the cusp of all of that technology right now. And, uh, even though I just spoiled the crap out of this movie, I still recommend watching this if you haven't already, just because it's a beautifully animated film. Bubblegum Crisis is a 1987 OVA that takes place in the futuristic city of Mega Tokyo in the year 2032. You'd be hard pressed to find something that's more cyberpunk than this. The story revolves around the Night Sabers, a group of mercenaries that take on assignments that are too difficult for even the police to handle. Their main adversary is the Genome Mega Corporation who basically have a monopoly on making androids called Boomers. Okay, Boomer. Got him. Boomers are synthetic humanoids that are similar to replicants in Blade Runner. Most of them act as servants, like waiters, maids, and bodyguards, and are generally dumb and robotic. But some are secretly advanced and have achieved human or even superhuman levels of intelligence. High-end combat boomers are designed to be spies and assassins, 
and usually blend in with humans until they burst out of their skin for combat. While these boomers are not described in the universe as artificial intelligence, they are a form of synthetic life that is intelligent and autonomous. Actually, in science fiction, there are not a lot of instances where things are explicitly described as artificial intelligence. But there is often a recurring theme of machines gaining sentience. So even though most things are described as supercomputers or advanced robots, I think all of it counts as some form of something that we would recognize today as AI. And Bubblegum Crisis is a pretty fun example of a powerful technology like this being centralized in the hands of a evil mega corporation. It kind of reminds you a bit of Blade Runner and Alien and Terminator and all that good stuff. And the detail on this animation is just exquisite. Especially the cityscape wide shots. They are just beautiful to watch. And I highly recommend watching this if you like cyberpunk action, because there is plenty of it. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about Battle Angel Alita, or... Hyper Future Vision Gunnanum. Gunnum. Gunnanumumumum. Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. The world of Battle Angel Alita is filled with a distinct lack of artificial intelligence. With all of the cybernetic augmentation going on, everyone you run into still has their human brain. And in fact, you don't even run into robots in this world. Even the things that you would think look like robots, these uh, deck men as they're called, they all have human brains. Now, this isn't really spelled out in the 1993 OVA, but this is discussed in the manga. And just as an FYI, the 2019 movie was largely based on the 1993 OVA, with some elements of the manga also incorporated in. But actually, the manga takes this concept of human brain power to the extreme with uh, things like um, human brain-powered rockets and expendable soldiers that are stored just as heads until they're ready to fight. So despite all of this advanced technology, the Earth's surface on this world is basically completely human-powered. And, spoiler alert, even the floating city of Zalem is run by a supercomputer that is a bunch of human brains. But that's not to say that AI does not exist in this universe, but it is conspicuously absent from Earth. And the closest thing on Earth that we get to sentient machines are these brain chips which are supposed to be a one-for-one -one replica of the human brain. And you could make an argument that this is AI, but it's not AI in the way that we would define it today. It's not a form of machine-oriented intelligence. It's a copy of the human brain. I could talk about this series for hours, and there are examples where AI does show up in the manga, there are robots in space, and in fact, the human brain-powered supercomputer is described as a super AI that has the capability to predict the future, and it has linked its consciousness with a group of humans that live above Earth's surface. But all of this is described way later in the manga, and the first part of Battle Angel Alita is really does not focus on this at all. And this series is more about asking the question, what does it mean to be human? And can you be human even if you've replaced all of your body parts, including your brain? Overall, it's a really good manga series. The two-episode OVA is just kinda okay. It's, um, 
It's about an hour long, and it covers the first arc of the manga. And it deviates from the source material a little bit, but I'd say it's worth watching. So, yeah, Battle Angel Alita. It's an interesting example of something that doesn't have to have a Rise of the Machines. The 1995 movie Ghost in the Shell is perhaps the most overt reference to AI that I have on my list. The movie is more or less about an AI that gains sentience on the net and then downloads itself into a physical body. It makes contact with the main character Motoko and wishes to merge with her consciousness, forming a new form of being that is neither human nor machine. In this case, the AI does not gain sentience through design. Instead, it just sort of happens spontaneously, ruling out of a military intelligence program. And the AI now seeks protection, because the people who developed it are now wanting to shut it down. This movie asks the question, what does it mean to be human? And what differentiates a human from a machine? If a machine can gain consciousness, then is it any different from a human that has transferred its consciousness into a machine? This movie is a classic and is a must-see for anybody who's a sci-fi fan or just a fan of good movies in general. But I don't need to tell you that because out of all the things on this list, this one is probably the most famous. So go watch Ghost in the Shell or read the manga. Time for the lightning round, where I mention things that barely count or don't really require dwelling on for very long. Here we go! In Space Battleship Yamato, Analyzer is basically a perverted Robbie the Robot. Vampire Hunter D has a cybernetic horse. There are ancient robots in Laputa Castle in the Sky that have been operating for hundreds if not thousands of years. The 1987 anthology film Neo Tokyo features a robot that is a construction worker foreman that refuses to allow his construction project to be cancelled. Metal Skin Panic Maddox 01 depicts a combat mech that has semi-autonomous combat capability. Goku Midnight Eye depicts the use of a satellite that uses computer vision to track the location of people. The mysterious island in Nadia the Secret of Blue Water is controlled by a supercomputer made by Atlantis. In Neon Genesis Evangelion, the Magi supercomputer system is described as artificial brains. Cowboy Bebop depicts an AI-controlled satellite that uses its lasers to create graffiti on the Earth's surface because it's lonely. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye. Bye-bye, Jaipa. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye